Hi everybody, I will be showing you the V3 release of SharePoint Framework, SharePoint Framework Toolkit. And if you don't know me, my name is, if the slides start moving, my name is Adam. I'm a simple standard dev, nothing special. I am an MVP and I'm part of the PMP core team and a maintainer of a couple of PMP products. Maybe you use and love like the CLI for, for Microsoft 365. Couple of VS Code extensions, including this one like SharePoint Framework Toolkit. And you just reach me out directly if you have any kind of questions. Okay, let's move on. So what is SharePoint Framework? Uh, probably if you're on the call, probably you already know, but just a recap. It's an extensibility model that allows you to extend SharePoint, of course, my, uh, Teams, um, Outlook.com, Microsoft 365.com, and Viva. Yeah, and this is the only extensibility model that allows you to extend Viva. It's quite awesome amongst many, many uh, cool capabilities. The, the one that stand out most is auto hosting. So you don't need to host when your app is ready on some cloud or the cloud next to this cloud. It's on your tenant on SharePoint and it's covered for you. Okay, let's move on. And what is SharePoint Framework Toolkit then? Then this is a VS Code extension, the extension that you can download, of course, from the VS Code Marketplace. It's open source and open for contributions. We have a lot of uh, currently smaller features you can contribute to and help us improve this tool and build it together. It's built together with Microsoft. So the biggest feature, bigger, bigger features we include in this tool, like for example, the ones we included in the V3 release, which I will be presenting today are rechecked and aligned with Microsoft if we are on the right track, if our imagination is aligned and stuff like that. So it's not something we just wanna add, it's something we recheck with Microsoft and they say, okay, go for it, it's cool. Okay, we have PMP samples uh, gallery included, I will show it today. We are using under the hood the same tooling as uh, the one that's recommended for SPFX development, like the Yeoman SharePoint generator. And under the hood, it comes along with CLI for Microsoft 365. Oh, yeah, this is cool. So this is a re inner dependency. You don't have to install CLI separately. Of course you can and you should, and it's really awesome. But it comes along with it uh, under the hood and it uses all of its capabilities. And currently not all, but only some. But if you know CLI for M365, you know what it's capable of. And this extension then can also do the same. Really cool. Why should you use a SharePoint Framework Toolkit? Well, if you are doing uh, SPFX uh, development, it helps you on every stage of development. So from the very beginning, when you are starting a new project or just introducing to, to SPFX and checking it out, how you can start, it, allow, it helps you manage your solutions. So I will show you in a bit. It allows you when coding, when uh, writing new code, uh, um, for your, uh, for your, so adding new components for your, for example, web part or extending your config uh, and helps you and has additional booster that helps you, for, for example, validate if your solution has the proper dependencies or upgrade it to the uh, latest version or rename and many, many more. It allows you to scaffold a CI CD pipeline that will deliver it to your dev or production environment. Really awesome and helps you with learning. And in V3, we improve the scaffolding process and added more features in each of those areas that will help you start, manage your, so a lot of managed features, a new way, a new area to scaffold the CICD pipeline in Azure DevOps before we had only GitHub support and NVM and also NVS support to it was added by Hugo Cool. So there are about 22 main features, but these are only main, uh, to, to be honest, there are a lot more. And today I will be only showing you the, the, those that we added in the V3 and this will give you only a glance because I don't have time, but be, uh, be aware that I am preparing a um, demo series about this product, which will we'll take it slow. We're gonna show every feature step-by-step step, so it will be proof aware and we're gonna go with examples of, from each of those areas. And today only those we, we included in the, in the last major. Okay, and you might ask because I already had this uh, question because there's already a VS Code extension that kind of supports SPFX development, right? Teams Toolkit kind of is. So Teams Toolkit is not only about SPFX, but about many other areas uh, where you can extend uh, basically M365, not only Teams. And one of those is SPFX web part. So this uh, extension allows you to scaffold kind of and de debug quickly your solution and ship it to your tenant. And SPFX Toolkit is uh, mainly focusing on SharePoint framework development. So this is entirely only about this technology and this extensibility model. And in the, uh, when you are using Teams Toolkit to scaffold a new SPFX web part, it will also work when you are using SharePoint framework toolkit. So if your SPFX web part to extend a Teams tab, 
is scaffolded not by the Yeoman SharePoint generator, but by Teams Toolkit. SPFX Toolkit will see, okay, I got you. I know how to read it and will still work and will uh, present you the managed features for this solution and also those action boosters for, for example, rename your solution or create a CICD pipeline. Okay, let's move on. So how to get started? Really easy. You go to the marketplace, you type SharePoint framework, should be the first one on the list. I hope so. You click install and off you go. And then it presents you the welcome experience. So you have the left side navigation as your welcome experience, but also a walkthrough, which allows you not to learn and start with this VS Code extension, but with SharePoint framework in general. So how to set up your dev, uh, dev, uh, dev tenant how to check your dependencies and set up your local environment. So you only need notes, nothing else. Then you click on this button and it basically checks if you have the proper version of Gob CLI, the Yeoman SharePoint generator, and yo, basically, if you don't have it, then yo, it will install it for you <laughs> with a single click. And then the next step, either in the walkthrough or in the, in the welcome experience is creating a new project, either from scratch or based on sample or open an existing one. And let's have a deep dive on creating a new uh, project. So basically, probably before you were using your uh, SharePoint framework, uh, SharePoint yeah, generator to, to scaffold a new project in your terminal. Uh, it's kind of, it looks kind of hacky for new newcomers. It could be overwhelming and it's not that clear how many steps there are, what information is required to create a new. Uh, so basically it could be improved and there was a lot of feedback that it should be improved. And we, the community basically improved it. So in the VS Code extension, you will now have a scaffolding form, which is really awesome. It's dynamic. It has only three steps and two are obligatory to start. The, the first is optional. It's dynamic, so it validates what, what you type, if it's possible to create in this location, the solution with this name. It supports every as, uh, SharePoint framework extensibility, so ACES as well, library, and so on and so forth. And the, the form changes dynamically by, based on the uh, project type you want to create, component type. And the third step is really cool. It's an additional step. It's a first uh, up, uh, first step also, and we, we want to improve this area as well in the coming releases, where you can pick uh, to add additional uh, dependencies to your project. So besides scaffolding, you can, for example, also say that, okay, I want to install React reusable controls and PMPJS along the way. I don't want to type it. I just want to have it. I create a new project. I want to set up and that's all. And off you go. And if you click on the create, just check it out. If you click on the output window, what do we use? We use the same command. So the Yeoman SharePoint generator, we didn't do anything hacky. We didn't do anything new here. We are using the same uh, tooling that Microsoft recommends. So we are sure that we are doing it the right way. And after it is scaffolded, you will, for a while you will see this uh, new file, which is project PMP when, when VS Code boots up. So when you scaffold a new project, the VS Code instance will not open a new instance, but will reopen in your new project. And then it will install those dependencies that you selected. So for example, the reusable React controls or PMP JS. And we will be improving in this area, not to only install the dependencies, but do a basic setup and, and add more additional things you can install along the, uh, along the way. But why would you start from scratch if you have so many samples? And probably this is you already are familiar with the sample gallery where you have, among many other samples, also the SPFX web parts extension and, and ACES and so on and so forth samples. And you can go to this page, di download directly this sample and then rename it for your purpose and so on and so forth. Why would you go here if you have this embedded in this VS Code, VS Code extension? Just check it out. You go on the, view, uh, on the view samples and the gallery is boom, it's here and it shows you the, um, the, the samples only related to SPFX. And for example, it's not a competition, but TM, TM, Teams Toolkit has a similar feature that has oh, like 40 template samples you can start, but we have 400. <laughs> this is really awesome. It was all, all cool work done by the community. So thank you, thank you very much. And do you have filters that you can trim down only to, to, to the component you're interested in? You have different views to make it yeah, better for you. And besides just clicking on use and downloading, downloading it, you can go to the view, which will present you the same readme file if you would go to the repo to this uh, sample directly in VS Code. And since it is so awesome managed by Hugo, you here, here have basically all the information you need what is supported for this extent, for this. Uh, sample, and then you can click on use. And before it's created, of course, you can have to pick the location, but also a new name. So this is probably what you already do either way. Yeah? And then it's downloaded for you and started and starts the NPM install. Really cool. We added some some managed uh, features 
we are still going to improve this area. So this is not only about coding, scaffolding new project, debugging, coding, and deploying, but also helping you managing what you already have and how what's your current condition. So there are two tabs in the VS Code extension, the account tab and the app catalog details tab. In the account tab, you have helpful links like to the uh, admin side or your main SharePoint side or to the web API permission site to, for example, approve the permissions. You have links to uh, all of your currently opened active service health incidents. So this could give you a glance why maybe some API is not responding and clicking on, that on it will redirect you to the uh, service health incident admin center. In the app catalog list, you have the tenant app catalog and the site app catalog. Currently, it only lists it, but we are going to improve here. So for example, if there is no app catalog at all, we want to give you a feature that will allow you to create anyone. So we will be able to create an app catalog from VS Code extension without going to SharePoint. Awesome, yeah. And we present you the tenant wide extension list. So all of your extensions that are available currently available on all of your on the whole tenant, you have this list only here. Currently, you can just click and go to this uh, to this extension directly. In the future, we want to give you man more managed features to, for example, remove this uh, uh, tenant wide extension or yeah, other or deactivate it. And the same for. Um, uh, SPFX packages installed on each capital, but this is uh, going to come. And one of uh, the last things probably I'm able to cover today is the feature that we allow you to scaffold a CI/CD workflow, a CI/CD pipeline, basically. If we're talking about other DevOps, basic uh, before we uh, so before V3 release, we supported only GitHub workflows, and now we support Azure DevOps as well. And basically. It's a form, it also presents a form directly in VS Code, so there's nothing, nothing hacky about it. And it, it doesn't integrate with Azure DevOps. It will scaffold a YAM pipeline, which then you can git commit and push to Azure DevOps and set up a pipeline based on this YAM file. So you don't need to know YAM. You will have a working workflow uh, YAM file generated by this tool. Really awesome. And as a couple of options, uh, based, uh, the, those that are already pre-filled, you can just scroll down, click generate, and it will give you a perfectly working fi uh, YAML file, uh, pipeline basically, yeah. But uh, the first one is just some general, what, how, what, we, what we, we like to have the name of your pipeline and which, what will be the branch name that will trigger the, the pipeline on every push, so every PR merge to this branch. Then you have the authentication section where you can choose between applic application authentication uh, mode, yeah, <laughs> which is recommended, I would say, for production use, or user authentication method, which for sure another production kind of thing, but you can do it for your dev tenant. It will only support if you're the user you will be using in your pipeline, doesn't have MFA, turn MFA turned on. But basically you should go with application, and if you don't have an application registry set up, yeah, check it out. You can do it basically directly from the form. So if you click on this, generate a certificate and create an app registration for me, then you need to provide, of course, your password, which we don't say if you need to remember it, <laughs> and what will be na the name of the Entra app registration, which this tool will create for you. And this is just bananas, right? But why do you need such a thing? If you are just starting your road, maybe you're wondering where Azure DevOps is a separate thing. It's a separate the cloud next to your cloud, or I don't know how it works, but basically it's not part of your tenant. And that's where you store your YAM pipeline that generates your repository, your code, and your YAM pipeline that generates your SPFX package, and that your M365 tenant is a thing next to it, and your SharePoint is on it. And when you want to deploy your package set, you have to somehow log in. It's the same thing for what you would do manually. You need to log in to SharePoint to drag and drop this package. And Azure DevOps pipeline needs to do the same. It needs to log in to your SharePoint, to your SharePoint tenant, uh, to, to be able to do it. And you have two possibilities, as I said, user or application. And uh, what this tool does for you, it will set up on your tenant uh, a new app registration using the certificate login. It will give you all of, and uh, along the way, it will provide all of those new scopes or permissions to do it to the app catalog. And the certificate will be used in this pipeline to basically log in and deploy your solution. Really awesome. So to do, to do this feature under hood, for example, uh, not for example, but particularly we use CLI here. Cool, let's go back. I, I want to create a new project. Then in the last step, I can uh, pick if I want to ha have the solution deployed in a tenant app catalog or site cat app catalog. If site, I can pick which one. And then I click on generate. It will set up something. I will show it in a while, but basically you created something awesome. I, write, I always want to do, wanted to do something awesome. And it gives you guidance what you can do <laughs> then with it to, to, make the, to set it up on Azure DevOps. So basically you need to commit and push it. Then you have all the instructions. What are the 
uh, secrets you will need to add. Basically, it's recommended to use the variable group. I will present it really quick in a bit. And uh, and and at the bottom, you can see those are the 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 secrets you will need to add. So yeah, don't hack my tenant. But <laughs> of course, uh, uh, well, thankfully, not the whole certificate base is present here. But you can copy it directly from the table and create a new variable with the same, and it will work. And check it out. Check this out. So you have a link to the app app to registration it created for you. If you click on it, it will direct you to your Entra ID to this newly created app specifically for your workflow. And it has a certificate set up already for you. And then it did scopes. OK, the scopes are a bit too much. If you would be deploying for a site app catalog, the site's full control is a bit too much. So it's a bit of a God mode application. But it's a good starting for, for sure. And then uh, what is scaffolded in your project, it will create a new Azure DevOps pipelines folder. And there you will have your YAM. You don't basically need to understand YAM. But if you do, I would highly recommend I will do a deep dive on it in my demo series along the way. But basically, it's really easy language. So you have the name, the name of the branch you, uh, that will trigger. It will run on Ubuntu. two. Then the section, the variable section, which you can prefill, which is not kind of recommended. You should move it to the variable group. Then you have a setup node version. Then the, the section will basically build your project. And then, whoa, check it out. So it installs CLI under the hood and uses CLI for Microsoft 365 script to log in, set the URL, Add the, uh, add the package and deploy it to Kato. Cool. Next, we add the commit, add magic, push it, and we are on Azure DevOps. With it. It's not like GitHub that will autom automatically pick it up and GitHub actions will run. No, Azure DevOps is a, can a different kind of thing. It needs additional love. So you need to go to the pipeline section. And what I'm describing, it's in the guidance. So it's, you don't need to know it. You don't need to be an expert. It's the second point here. So go to the new pipeline. Then Azure uh, repos Git, so that's where you store your code. Then the branch, uh, so the repository. Then pick the exist uh, that you want to create a pipeline based on the existing YAM file. This is your YAM file. You can review it and click on Run. But you, before you run, you need to prefill those variables there, and it's recommended not to do it directly here in the YAM because it will be part of your code and visible, therefore visible in your repository. You should rather uh, uh, go to the library and add a new variable group. Doesn't matter what, what name you will add, but then you can go in the variable sections of this variable group, copy paste from the table that were presented when you created in the VS Code extension those properties. As you can see now, they are not visible, so they're encrypted like a password. And this is really awesome because you can also leverage the other key vault here. And security, so you can, for example, have uh, some admins of this pipeline that are allowed to modify those va variables in this group, and developers only in read only mode. And then you just need to uh, change in the pipeline that you will be using properties in this group. That's it. You click on run, it runs, I hope, <laughs> and it will deploy uh, your package created by this pipeline to the app catalog every time you run it, either manually or push something new to the main page. Okay, I already exceeded my time, so. We're, our roadmap, up ahead, we are already looking at V4, and we are going to support most logging to multiple tenants, use crunch, multiple tenants and multiple accounts. We're going to, as I said, add more uh, managed um, features for your SPFX solutions. Uh, we want to give you a new feature that will help you set up a dev container for your SPFX project. It's really cool if you want to uh, start leveraging and using code spaces. We want to support multiple is SPFX projects because now it allows you to manage and it will um, basically run if your your VS Code instance is open in a single SPFX solution that can have a couple of SPFX components like WebPart extension. But what if you want to go one folder above and be in a folder that has a couple of projects? So we want to add the support like multi-project and mul multiple accounts and multiple tenants. See what we are going here? Yeah, multiple <laughs> universe. Okay, and then, whoa, <laughs> and then extend. Uh, the scaffolding process with additional optional steps, for example, to install additional dependencies uh, and more and more settings to make this uh, VS Code extension uh, customizable. Okay, that's uh, that's all from my side. Thanks for uh, all for watching. If you are interested, go visit our repo, aka.ms/vivas/vscode. And as I said, in the near future, I know I was speeding, but we're gonna take it slow next time and save those dates. We're gonna do it. Uh, demo series about this tool specifically. Happy coding, everybody!